Okay, tonight we're going to talk about the person page on Family Tree. This is kind of like one, like a regular meeting at church, like a Sunday school class in church, where you say, "Oh, that topic again." But hopefully, we can maybe bring up some things that might be new to you, or might remind you of some things that you can do on this page because it is a very important page on Family Search. So, you know, the person page is really where all the action occurs or almost all the action occurs. And there's an awful lot of stuff on this page. And so what I want to do is kind of go through the page, starting at the top and then go down the left side and then down the right side and hit each of those areas and talk about the importance, things that I find important in each of those areas. So we'll start with the header. and. The header has a place for a portrait, which you may or may not have on a person. If they don't have any pictures, it's hard to have a portrait. But if they have pictures, you can have a portrait showing. It used to be that those pictures, you could set it for your view. Like this is my great grandmother. I could have this picture for her, for me, and other people could have a different picture. But Family Search found that very few people actually set these and didn't seem to be a piece of uh, contention out there. And so they've changed it to make it easier on the website by if you change this view, everybody will get the view that you show. So everybody gets the same view. So it could be possible that you and somebody else might have a slight discussion over which one of the views is the favorite view. But in most cases, I've never found any problems with that. Next to it is where their basic information is. And the name is important to understand. This is the official name that the record goes under. When you go searching for the name, though, this is not the only name that people can search on. If there are names over in the other information category, alternate names, all the alternate names and this name get searched on. So it doesn't really matter you know, that this name has to include everything about the person. You don't want nicknames included here. You don't want brackets and things like that that are you know, putting information in there that's not acceptable. Just pick a name, the, probably the name that's the most used by that person, the one most people would recognize, put it there and then put all the other ones, the nicknames and the AKAs over in the other category. And they will be searched by that. So like I have a father, my dad was Joseph James Givens. That's what his record shows on the main page like this. But he went by Jim or Jimmy. And so we put that in the AKAs under nicknames, actually under alternate names, nicknames. And if somebody searches for Jim Givens, it'll bring them to the Joseph James Givens record if they give enough information to, to show it. So anyway, this basic information area has the name, has the birth and death data that's showing on the record. And it also includes the ID number for the person. And this is one of several places where you can click on the number and copy it so that you don't have to write it down. It'll copy to your notepad and then you can use it whenever you need to. Up here in the header, you also can click on the view tree and see the person's pedigree. That's the pedigree of this person, not your pedigree. You can also click on following, which is essential if it's a person that you know other people tend to have problems with as far as putting other information in there or changing the background of this person or adding family members and you're worried about this record, click following so that you get notices when people make changes to this record. And then last but not least across the top, you have the view my relationship. And this will show you your relationship to this person. Remember, if you're working as a helper for somebody, when you do this, it's not going to show your relationship to this person. It's going to show the person you're helping's relationship. Okay, starting down the main section on the left in the page, we come to the area where we have the life sketch. 
And the life sketch is one thing that's not used an awful lot. This is a place where you can put a synopsis of the person's life. That's what you see here. This is actually just a cut and paste from um, Find a Grave. But you can also post here warnings or things about similar people in Shree and why this person shouldn't be merged with them or any other things that you feel are really important, especially if there are conflicts. I'd like to show a couple of those. I have one of my, I don't know, fourth, fifth great grandmothers who um, we have a real problem with. She was the wife of Robert Pogue. And for a century, people have said that her name was Elizabeth Preston, but there's really no uh, validation for that. And after doing a lot of research, many of us have come to the conclusion that her name's really Elizabeth Rennick. And so to help resolve this issue, because when you try to go in and change Elizabeth Preston to Elizabeth Rennick, all heck breaks loose. And people, some people get all upset. There's really two camps here. And so what we did ultimately is we struck a deal with the people that want Elizabeth Preston. And we, we struck a deal that Robert Pogue will have two wives, Elizabeth Rennick and Elizabeth Preston, and the two sides will not mess with the other side's wife. And so we spelled out all that on here so that we could have, you know, some peace over this and have everybody happy. And this is really the ultimate of collaboration until we can get enough proof positive to convince everybody this is the best compromise that we could come up with. I have another one that's much shorter. This is basically the same situation where John York here had a wrong set of parents for a long time. And we finally actually researched him out, and found his real parents. And um, we went in and, and changed things added this here and really were surprised that most people were happy to go along with this. We did leave the other line in there just so people wouldn't get upset, but nobody has complained at all that the main line now goes through a different set of parents, which are actually research. So this, this life sketch can be very helpful in resolving issues and helping calm things down. Because before this, with either one of these sites, it was a weekly issue and things were being kicked around back and forth constantly. And so this has really helped things out. Okay, in the vitals section where you have birth, marriage, death, uh, baptism, one key thing there is to have standardization. It really, really is important to standardize dates, standardize places. By doing this, you allow family tree to use this data to its best abilities when you're out trying to match with other records, trying to find documents that match up like sources, or trying to find people to match with. If you have standardized dates and places, the system works much better to your advantage. And so to be effective, you really need to do the standardization. And I know on the place standardization, it's not always perfect, but do the best you can because the more you standardize, the better chance you have for the system to find the things that you're looking for. Now, when you do open up somebody to edit, possibly standardize or whatever you need to do, you get the little screen here and there are some parts here that you might not really pay much attention to. One of them is that you can actually see all the changes that were ever made. This is a death record. So you're gonna be able to see all the changes that have been made to this record in the death category over time. And so when you click on that, this is what comes up for this particular person. And you can see that it started out with her death being a, a year and then Hadley, Saratoga, New York. 
And then over time, it's now morphed into an actual date in Warrensburg, Warren County, New York, which isn't really that far away. These are two adjoining counties. But um, my great-great-grandmother, great-great-great-grandmother actually uh, moved up to Warren. And you can see in the other information that I put in here that this is where she lived at death. If you look down here in the reason for the information, she was there on the 1855 census, which was the year before she died. And that's where she's buried. So logic would say that's where she probably died too. And so you wanna, if you wanna see the history of what's going on, be sure to check all changes. Sometimes that's a clue to you that something major has been done to this record to alter it if things change drastically in this list. Okay, sources and reasons that matter. And I, I've mentioned the, the reason, but you need to put reasons in. In this case, it was just a standardization. The date or place had not been standardized, so I standardized it, or Debbie did. But you, you can always put in there good reasons for why that was added. The other thing you'll see there is when you see who did this, you now have a potential cousin. That submitter, it's their name, her name is in blue. You can click on it, and if she's turned it on, you're going to be able to actually uh, see if she's related to you. You'll be able to see your relationship to this person if she's turned that feature on. The other thing that's nice that sometimes we kind of forget about is that when we open up an edit, like the category death, <clears throat> it's going to show us all the sources that have a death record in them. And this can be helpful in a couple of ways. For one thing, you wanna make sure that these all refer to the same person. In this case, it's my great grandfather, Alexander Wilkins. And you can see that many of these say Alexander Wilkins, blah, blah, blah. So I know they're about him. If they had John Jones, I would start worrying. The other thing is, you can also click on those and look inside them and see what dates they have there to see if you can see which ones have actually been used to contribute the date and place on this particular vital record. So there are some ways that this is put together for you to use that you may not normally think of. Okay, next section down is the other information area. And in there, you're going to find a whole bunch of things that kind of fill out the person, give them some more information, make them a little more complete. You'll find that uh, the system creates many of them, even though they put your name on it. Like this one right here where it says Residence 1850, and it said created by me. Well, the system created it. They created it when I attached the 1850 census to my grand great grandmother. And so the system actually put these in here. I put one in myself. Actually, I put two of them in here. These first two relating to names are things that I put in. But you'll also find many times things that the system put in. And so there's a, a chance here for you to add all kinds of extra things. This is where the extra stuff should go. It takes a little bit of work, but it'll be there to show people if you do it. And so to work in there, at the top of the list, you'll see a little section that says add information. When you click that, this little drop down appears that I've cut off. And it starts out with alternate names. And so if you click on alternate names, you get a chance to add four types of names, and also known as AKA, or birth name, or married name, or nickname. And you can give a reason for each one. And so my grandmother here is kind of funny because her name that we knew her by forever was Jenny Elizabeth Beck. 
my mother was named after her grandmother. She was named Jenny Elizabeth Hale. And that's really kind of ironic because see, Jenny Elizabeth Beck wasn't born Jenny Elizabeth Beck. In 1870, she decided that's what she would call herself. She was born Elizabeth Jane Beck, and apparently she hated the name Elizabeth. So when 1870 came along on the census, she suddenly became Jenny Elizabeth and got married, moved back from Ohio to Pennsylvania, and nobody ever knew what her real name was until a few years ago. The real irony here is that my mother, who was named after her, hated Jenny and always went by Elizabeth. So Elizabeth went by Jenny and Jenny went by Elizabeth and everybody was happy. Anyway, that's my story for today about why we put in all these alternate names. In this case, it's extremely important because almost nobody knows her by her birth name. They all knew her through her AKA. Now, names are only a small portion. And again, remember, any names you put here will be able to be searched on. And that's really important when somebody's trying to find this person. If they search for Jenny Elizabeth or Elizabeth Jane, it'll take them to this record. Okay, you can also click on events. There's all kinds of events here. There's affiliations like groups the person may have belonged to. You can mark they were cremated or their immigration record or military service or naturalization or occupation. A religious affiliation, residents, you have some that the census doesn't have, or even stillborn. Of course, be careful on that because the stillborn definition the church uses is that if a child's marked as stillborn, they don't need temple work. In Europe, stillborn, all that means is that the child died shortly after death, could have been born dead or died shortly after death. In Europe, stillborn children have their temple work done for them. So you got to be careful. If it was a European child, I would not mark it this way. If it's here in the United States, you know the child did not really live, you could mark it stillborn. But what it'll do is it'll blank out the uh, need for a ceiling to parents box if you have stillborn list listed here. So beware. And then there's custom event. You can add any other event that you want <clears throat> by just clicking on custom event and making up your own. Then below events or facts like cast names, clan names for like in India or in other countries, uh, national identification, national origin. You can also mark a person that never married or had any couple relationship. You can mark that for the person. You can also mark them that they never had any children, that they were childless, if you know that to be a fact. And those things could help other researchers. You can also fill in a physical description, their race, tribe name, or you can make a custom fact. And I was thinking about that today. Under facts, you could make a custom fact for DNA. There is no other place in family search that you can do anything about DNA, but you could create a DNA fact for this person if you wanted to. That's just an idea. I was trying to brainstorm, well, what could I put there? And that's a good one. Okay, family members. This is the one section that a lot of people are confused over because if they're not real good genealogists, haven't done it for a long time, they may not be familiar with what's going on here. We have two sets of family group sheets. On the left side, we have the person whose page we're on, which in this case is Claude Irving Hale because he's in dark print. His box is kind of grayish. And it shows him with his spouse or spouses, in this case spouses, because he was married twice, and his children listed, which was my mother, and that was all. On the other side, you see this same person, Claude Irving Hale, showing his parents and his siblings. So you have two types of family groups showing, one with the person as a parent, one with the person as a child. Now, 
you can add on either side spouses or parents. On the left side, you can add another spouse. If you, in fact, find he's married again, you can click add spouse and put a third spouse in there with him. On the parent side, if say he was adopted, you could add his birth parents or his adopted parents in there so that he had two sets of parents. Yes, it's okay to do that. And you would set their relationships so that you know whether it's a biological or adoptive or guardian or step or what kind of relationship that's there. But you can show more than one set of parents. It gets confusing. It gets a little messy on the tree, but it can be done. Now, there's many more things we can do down here. We can add children in on the left side underneath the children and each family will be a box where you can click and add child. You can either fill it in or you can give an ID number for somebody who's already in tree and add the person there. You can also add a child at the very bottom of this column. If say you found a child that was Claude's child, but the mother wasn't noted and you can't determine who the mother was, you could put a child down there connected just to Claude. Or if this was a woman, say this was on Helen's page, we could have a child that was just the child of Helen, but we don't know who the husband is. So there's a way to add a child there. On the other side, there's also an add child at the bottom of the siblings. But I cut it off, unfortunately, so you can't see that. In addition, you have all these little pencils and paper icons, which are an editing icon. When it's in a relationship box, a couple relationship box, like is showing here, you can edit the relationship. You can add or remove or edit dates or places. You can actually change the people in this. If you discovered that it really wasn't Mary Jane Bortner, but it was Sally Smith, who was the wife, you could swap Mary Jane for Sally. And you can also add sources there. You can also add in the date and place if it wasn't there. In addition, all the individual relationships have these little pencil icons also. And when you go to that one, you can add, edit the child's relationship. You can remove them from this family, or you can just change one or, or the other of the parents or remove both parents and actually remove the person out of the family. And you can also set relationship types. In this case here, Claude will be shown with John M. Hale and Mary Jane Bortner. I could set the relationship for this to be biological if I wanted to. There's no other relationship, so it's not really necessary. But if I had step parents or something like that in there, I would definitely want to mark the ones that were the biological parents. And so that can be done anywhere where you see an individual child with that little pen. You can't change their dates and places. You have to go to their home page to do that. You do this for just editing relationships. OK, starting on the right hand side. We have research help. And the research help section is there to help you make this record more accurate and complete. And a lot of times you may not notice if you're not paying close attention that you're not seeing everything in it. In this case, it says show all and there's a little nine. That nine means there's really nine total things in the research help. I only see one, two, three, four, five. So it's missing four things. And these things will include possible duplicates, which you're seeing in blue, record hints, excuse me, not seeing possible duplicates at all. Right now, there's no possible duplicates. Record hints, you're seeing three of. Uh, research suggestions, you're seeing a couple of suggestions in purple there and data problems which show up in red. Things like uh, 
this person has a child who was born after they died or something like that, something that just doesn't make sense. And so this is a great place to work from if you're trying to make a record for a person to be as accurate and complete as possible. Now, if you click on show all, this is what the page will look like. And you'll be able to see all of them. You'll see in this case that there were seven different hints for Colonel James Sands. And so by adding them, you would be able to really bring his record to have a lot more completion than it had prior to this. Okay, next thing down is search records. Such a simple thing. And we go there a lot. We go over there and we click on family search and it takes us to the family search records and we look to see you know, what records we can find for this person. Oftentimes, we don't look at the others other than the Google at the bottom, Ancestry through Filet are all pay sites. And of course, because of family searches partnerships, we have free access to these. And there's a reason for it. These sites have records that family search doesn't have, especially if you go to Ancestry, which is the king of sites up there. And really, there is no reason why we all shouldn't have an Ancestry account, a free account. Now, our our public members, if you work in a family history center, our public that comes into the center, they might have paid accounts for some of these. If they don't, when they come to the center, they can use these sites for free through the portal. So they'll have the same basic uh, ability to search them as we do when they're at a family history center. And the last one down there, Google, I can't say enough about. I bet you hardly any of us have ever clicked on Google when we're doing our research on family search, but I'd recommend you do. I can't imagine if you have all the things that are on that person's person page and you click Google, it's gonna put all that into a search on Google. And you might be surprised what you'll come up with. I find a lot of things using Google myself because there's a lot of stuff on the web that isn't in any of these standard websites. There are other kinds of records, there are documents, there are uh, things that people have compiled, things that you just won't find in a normal you know, ancestry or find my past site or family search site. And so it's well worth using Google. So use it to its full advantage. The next section is latest changes. A lot of times we don't understand latest changes. Now, latest changes will supposedly give us every change that's ever happened to this record from the time it was created till now with one big problem. Back in 2012, we didn't have tree, we had a thing called new dot family search. When they took the records that were in new dot family search and migrated them to tree, they stripped off all the changes because they couldn't bring all that stuff. And they even stripped off the actual sources that were attached. And so there is a, a window there at the back end, late 2012, where beyond that, we can't see changes. So if there were bad merges in this record, we may know this record is really two people merged. If we can't find that merge in these latest changes, it probably happened back before 2012. And if it did, there's no way we can do anything about it as far as changing things. But basically since 2012, this list actually will show everything, which can be a mess. So this list will show you what kind of changes were made. They categorize each change like source attached. It'll tell you who the submitter was. And again, you can click on the person's name, see how you're related. And then there's show all to expand the list. And if we do that, it comes to a page like this, except I cut this off after three things because this could have gone for 150 things. 
I mean, these lists become gigantic and they can be a real problem. But you, it, if sometimes there's a need to see all the changes. And if you're wise and it's a lot of changes, you may want to filter for what you're really looking for. If it's something to do about the, the relationships of this person, parent relationships, you could just filter for that. But what you do is you go up here where filter is, click on that and you get a long list of things you can filter by. These are all the different categories in uh, the person page where changes can be made. And you can click on any of those that you want to use. I know a lot of times I'm working on trying to decide if this person really is a person or two people merged together, two different people. And so what I'll want to do is click on merges. And then what happens is over here on this side where you see the list, the only things that are going to be listed here will be merges. And I can then see at a real fast glance, all the different merges that have happened in order from the most recent at the top to the oldest at the bottom. And so there's a lot of things you can do with this depending on what it is you're trying to determine. You could put in sources and you could see who attached all the sources and who the sources were about. Maybe that will give you some ideas of other people that might have been merged in here or something like that. Okay, the next section down is tools. Simple little area that a lot of times people don't pay too much attention to. You can see if there are possible duplicates. If there aren't possible duplicates, but you know there's somebody you can merge. You can do a merge by ID and put that other person's ID in there, even though this says possible duplicates zero, possibly. We'll talk about similar people in just a second. This has a place for abuse. Now understand what abuse is. Abuse is offensive wording, spam, political statements and inappropriate statements like somebody calling you stupid or something like that. That's abuse. Changing the tree so it isn't the way you want the tree to look is not abuse. That's a problem with collaboration. And most of the time, if you complain, so-and-so won't Put, you know, keeps changing my great great grandfather, they're going to say, Well, then you need to collaborate. They will step in if it gets bad enough and it goes on over a period of time or is particularly malicious. But really, they usually will just say, We're sorry, but you need to collaborate because there's no way they could manage every single dispute and treat with a billion point six people in there. You'll also see a thing there for delete person. Now notice this one says, and like almost always it says, delete person unavailable. You have to understand the only time you can actually delete a person is if you have just put that person in and you're the person that put the person in, it will show for you that you could delete them back out. But once you start making changes to that person, adding or changing birth dates or adding relationships, it's not going to let you delete it anymore. Okay, and the sad part is when they do merges, they call the record that they archive deleted. That's not the same thing as this delete. What they're doing is just making that, arc, that record not viewable anymore. It's still there. You just can't view it. If you knew its ID, you could search for it and find it. But a truly deleted person is no longer there. That record is just wiped out. But that's the tool section. Now, this similar people thing is important. <clears throat> Family search is very, very tight on what it gives you for possible duplicates. You often know there are duplicates out there, but the system won't show them and it can drive you crazy. Well, one thing you can do is you can go to find similar people. When you're on this person's page, 
they will go out and search for other people that are like this person. And they may find ones that are already marked as duplicates. They'll actually find your person that you're on. So that person will be in the list, but it'll start showing you others that didn't qualify as a possible duplicate. And so you can often find those duplicates that you, you need to merge just by coming to here and doing a, and just looking at what comes up. It's already done the search for you. So don't, don't forget to use this if you're suspecting that there's other duplicate people. Okay, the next section down is printing. And you know, not very often do we actually print out a family search. But one of the issues we have, of course, is if we wanna, if we're LDS and we want to present something printed to uh, non-member friends or family, we often don't want the temple information showing. There's a way to remove that, but you have to go to your settings and under account in your settings, that's up there where your name is and you click on your name and in the drop down you go to settings and then go to account. There'll be a little thing there that says show temple information and you can click that off. If you click it off, then temple information will not show up on your screen or in any of, any of your prints. Now, the one thing you got to remember is when you're done printing, you might want to turn that back on. Otherwise, you're going to lose out on all the temple parts of the program. But that's how you make it so that when you print a family group sheet, let's say that there's no temple stuff showing there. Now, the other thing about this is you can print pedigree charts and you see there's three kinds in family group sheets with or without sources. The key thing is you've got to go to the page, the person page of the person that you want in the home position on the chart. If it's a pedigree, you want to go to the person page of the person in the starting position on the pedigree. If it's for a family group sheet, you want to be on the person page of either the husband or the wife so that they show up as the parent in the family group sheet. That's important because otherwise the sheet won't print out properly. And then you just go ahead and you click print and go ahead and print it out. Fairly simple little system, but just those two things you need to remember. Okay, last but not least, what do you do when you need more help? No matter where you are in Family Search, you can always get to the Help Center. I've circled the little question mark that's inside the circle. No matter where you are, you can click on that. And when you do, a page or a little drop down appears. And based on where you are at this time, you will get some suggested topics. So right now I'm just on the whole person page. So it's giving me some general suggestions for the whole person page. If I was on an edit location on this page, maybe editing the name, I would start getting some suggestions, some pre-canned suggestions on editing. If I can't get answers to what I need for right now, then the next thing to do is to click on Help Center and go ask my question there. I like to go down where the link is, click on that, and then click on the specific topic that I'm after, like family tree or whatever, rather than go up here and say, search in the Help Center here, because it's gonna search the entire Help Center and I'm going to get responses that have to do with uh, memories and uh, family history consultants and family history centers and all kinds of other stuff when really all I wanted was how to edit a name. So I prefer to go down to the help center and pick a category like family tree and then do it. But you can do this from any page if there's a need for help. Now that's a lot of information.
I hope it's helped you. I hope you've gotten some good ideas. I hope I've given you some new ideas, but the key thing is to try to learn to use everything on that page to its maximum so that you can have the best results that you can have when you're working in tree. So questions, do we have any questions tonight? Uh, 